Good afternoon. This is Reg Boswell, Pastor Boswell, over at the Maria Church of God in Christ in Rogersville, Alabama. And welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. We have a wonderful lesson tonight, and this is very special for me being um, our first live broadcast. And um, the subject today is trusting God, spirit, soul, and body. Trusting God, spirit, soul, and body. Welcome, come on in. And our scripture, our main scripture, will be coming from Romans, the eighth chapter, and the twenty-eighth verse. Very familiar passage of scripture. And we're going to start at the twenty-sixth um, verse. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not of what we should pray, for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he make intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose trusting God spirit soul and body and I, I thought about it is why we can't trust man there's a difference between trusting God and trusting man the factors that go into trusting man is man is for one finite as God is infinite. Man is composed of natural elements which give way to certain weaknesses. God is eternal. Trusting God will lead you to a, making the perfect decision in your life, despite any past mistakes you've made concerning your life. Um, I remember once when I was a young man, um, there was a, a, a group of individuals and they wanted me to join in their um, their group. And this was the 5% nation. And even though I wasn't in um, going to church, I wasn't professing to be a Christian, I, don't, I wasn't even saved uh, professing salvation at that time. But they um, wanted to, they called themselves gods. And it was just something in me that I couldn't call myself a God, even though many of them were my friends and, you know, even some lifelong friends. And, you know, um, I could I could not come to the, the conclusion of calling myself a God. So therefore, um, I didn't join that group because of that, even though many of my friends, and in, in, in to bring that up, um, I had a friend, his name was Infinite. Well, he was named infinite but he he passed away and he is now essentially infinite but we need to be careful the names we choose for ourselves the groups and associations that we uh, uh, align ourselves up with um, and the scripture says every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed then when lust is has conceived it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. This is scripture, why we can't trust man. We can trust God, but we cannot trust man. Not all the time. We can't put our all our eggs in that trusty man basket. Amen. So it, it requires faith to trust God. And to live a life of love. It requires faith. You need faith in order to trust God. And of course. You need to live a life of love. Because God is love. Why you cannot trust man. Uh, there is something called the flesh. Paul listed the works of the flesh. In Galatians. His first uh, entry in the Bible. Even though Galatians is the. Uh, first book written by Paul is not listed chronologically that way but it is his first book written he wanted to warn the Galatians that the acts are the flesh or 
different things. And you can find those in chapter 5, verse 19 through 21. But he listed um, these works. And um, also he warned Timothy. And, 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 and Timothy um, listed these also in his second epistle, um, chapter 2, 3 through 5. Let me just read that real quick. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men should be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, obedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection to parents. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection to parents. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce despisers of those that are no that are no good. Despisers Spisers that are those of those who are good, rather. So, with all these things going on, this this gives us a reason why we can't trust man, because you don't never know what the is what you're facing in a particular individual. He goes on to say, traitors, hot heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but deny, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Now, Scripture, uh, this Timothy was warning us not to uh, look at, at man on the outward appearance, amen. And, but there are some things that go inside of a man, and his actions can give him away. So uh, you can't, you can't really even trust yourself, basically, because you have these attributes in you that are um, like a magnet. To flesh, so we need to have the ability to crucify the flesh on a daily basis. Until you're able to crucify the flesh wholeheartedly, you really can't trust yourself. And this requires practice, discipline, and training to crucify your flesh. Amen. Because even look at the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane when Jesus he uh, was going through great trials and um, great. Um, drops of blood dripped and he was pained and he had to struggle with this in a great way so much less us amen so we need to learn how to trust God with our spirit soul and our body and in order to trust God we need to be a son of God amen and this this you know this, uh, when you say a son of God we talk about a spiritual son and we know that uh, your spirit is gender, genderless. You live in a body. Your body has a gender. Amen. And I would like to make a preposition also your soul. Your soul has a gender. You ever heard that? Amen. Um, so let me just prove that to you in, in these um, scriptures that I'm going to read. Your soul has a gender. Your soul is made of, of the components of your mind, will, and emotions. So a woman can be named a son of God when she's referenced as mankind. Amen? Mankind. But your soul has um, a mind, a will, and emotions. And these things are closely connected to your body, your gender. Amen? And we're going to go into some things about that later. But Jesus said, And answering said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain the, that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection. So this was um, an answer that Jesus gave when one of the Pharisees asked him, trying to trip him up, um, who will be the, the rightful um, um, wife, uh, husband, wife of a uh, person who's married multiple times. But we know that there is no marriage after, um, after you die. Amen. So we know that we need to learn how to trust God. We can't trust God unless we know how to crucify our flesh. And to crucify our flesh, we need to practice and discipline our nature to be um, able to serve God. Condition, condition your soul to serve God. Amen? So, 
your mind, your mind, your your will and your emotion, emotions com compose of your soul. Now we know that a man is a spirit, soul, and body, and all those go in together to make a man. However, when um, you separate one of those entities from a man, that man is no longer a man. That man is either deceased or something like that. But your mind, your mind, your body is affected by the mind, which is influenced by the brain. Amen? See, your mind and your brain are two separate things. But your, your mind affects your brain and your brain affects your mind. Amen? And also, uh, it's just for instance, someone has a brain injury, amen, that, uh, that may affect your mind, but your, your mind is not your brain, amen. Your will, your will, amen, your will is your body and the functioning thereof affects your will. So your body can affect your will. If you're sick, if you're feeling bad, it can actually affect your will, amen, and your emotions. Your physical orientation may also have an outlook on the circumstances that may vary. And let me just go into some things uh, such as um, testosterone and estrogen. These are physical things that your body has, um, that your body has. And um, testosterone, we know, occurs in both male and female. However, it's 20 times more in males. And testosterone helps you develop uh, muscle mass, bone density, hair growth, other things. It's a hormone. It's a, it's a male hormone, amen? And the estrogen is a female hormone. It helps with child development and also those feminine um, characteristics a woman may have. Now, these are... This is how you're born in the world, in the natural, as a male or female. Amen? So these things are uh, connected to your soul. Amen? Because your soul is composed of your mind, will, and emotions. And these, these chemicals are also um, important to the development of your natural man. Amen? And we know that nowadays we're living in an area that um, a time when... Um, Romans says, men are changing the truth of God into a lie, and they and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that was against nature. So that's, that's talking about a woman having a, a particular use. Amen. God created a woman for a particular use. A God created a male for a particular use. But people tend to change the truth of God into a lie. And likewise, men also leaving a natural use of women burn in their lust one toward another. Now, this was written over 2,000 years ago, but it's happening now. Lust after one another, men seeking men. Which is unseemly, the scripture says, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, King James, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to what? A reprobate mind. It's that mind again, your mind. To do those things which are not convenient. Amen? So many times, the... Um, what we face in our orientation is connected to our soul, amen? And our soul is connected to our spirit. And we need to learn how to serve, serve God and trust God with our, our spirit and our soul and our body. With our body, we crucify our flesh, amen? And with our soul, we command our soul to bless the Lord, amen? And with our spirit, our spirit communes with God's with groans and utterings that we can't even, it's esoteric, we don't even know, amen, what those things are that we're saying, but we're praying in the spirit, amen. And all those constitute you being a spiritual person. Your spirit, soul, and body must combine to serve God. All the whole of you, God wants all of you. He wants your entire being to worship him. He don't want to parcel out nothing to the devil. He don't want to reserve, he don't want you to have any reservation to sin. Amen. Any reservation over here to cause that area to be defiled, to defile the rest of your body. 
Amen. So he wants the whole of you. He wants a wholehearted person. Amen. So that's that's a one definition of holiness. Wholeness, holiness, wholeness. One. We serve a God that's one God. Amen. He's one God. He's a God that's able to see you your needs. He's a God that's able to deliver you. But he wants a whole person. He don't want part of you. Amen. He don't want a uh, part of you that on Tuesday and Thursday and then you do something else on Wednesday. He wants every day. And we must learn how to crucify, to crucify our flesh. To learn how, and that, that, that's, that requires discipline. It, it, it requires work. Amen. It requires um, not sitting and doing things that are unseemly and then expecting to do something holy. Many things take practice. They came up with this science, brain plasticity, and they, they said the things, uh, you practice things and you get better with them, and the neurotic, the pathways in your brain, they, 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 they develop habits, and you're able to develop skills through the practice of a habit, amen? And you can look at this uh, in the Bible when Joshua said, choose this day who you will serve. Choose this day. Who you will serve. Either you're going to serve God. Or you're going to serve the devil. But if you choose this day who you're going to serve. Then that's going to make that pathway to the to the liquor store a little less. It's going to make that pathway to the dope man a little less. But if you keep going to the dope man. If you keep going and doing the things that you need to do. Then that's going to keep that pathway open. Amen. You ever see a path. Um. You know, a path that's, that's less taken over over time, the path, weeds and brush start to grow. And after 20 or 30 years, there's no more path left. Amen? So that's what, choose this day. When you choose this day, then the weeds start growing. The, the, the bushes start growing over those old, those old pathways that don't mean, you, don't mean you no harm. It means you all the harm, but it don't mean you any good, rather. Amen? So he changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. You know, we put in things over God. Things in our lives we're putting over God. You know, many times, and, and, and Jesus said, my burden is easy. You know, his yoke is light. Amen. So it's nothing hard for you to do. And uh, this, this says here in, in verse 28. They did not retain God in their knowledge. Retain. They did not keep him. They did not consider God. They did not consider the ways of God. Amen. When they asked me to join the 5% Nation in 1985, they said, man, you're an 85er. I thought they called me an 85er because it was 1985. I, I, you know, they called everybody different things. Amen. They called them um, weak, you know. And if you wasn't with them, you wasn't in the in crowd. But I chose not to call myself a God. You know, I didn't, you know, I knew that I wasn't God. Because if I knew I called myself a God, then that locked God up. I knew it was a God. Because as a youth, every time I would call on the name of Jesus in those dreams that I was having when the devil was chasing me, the devil would stop chasing me. He would just fall down. I would have these reoccurring dreams. The devil was chasing me, and I'd be running. I didn't know what to do. I tried this, called my mother, called dad, call it, it, call whatever, you know, call whoever, call my neighbor. But when I called the name on Jesus, then that devil just stopped. It's something about the name Jesus. So I couldn't call myself a God because I know it was somebody higher than me. Amen. God bless my brothers, amen. God bless those brothers, amen. Those who have went on and gone away and those who have died. God bless them. God bless and, and God bless their families and uh, uh, comfort those um, who've lost loved ones, amen. And um, But, you know, one thing is for certain. We need to find God for ourselves, amen. Because we have to answer to God ourselves, amen. So we need to condition our soul to serve God. We need to serve him with our mind. We need to serve him with our will and our emotions. Amen. That's our soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. Jesus said, serve the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your spirit. Amen. All your mind, all your heart, and all your spirit. 
He's talking about your soul. Amen. And we and that's part of us that we have control over it. Amen. We have control over our souls. Amen. And that's why when we say uh, when, when a young person is going to um, learning his, their prayers and their, their parents teach them, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Amen. Now, may, you may not understand this, but when you pray the Lord your soul to keep, you put your, you say, I trust God. Amen. You're not trying to keep your own soul. You're trusting God to keep that part of you. Amen. And we want to condition our soul to serve God. I have some other things I want to discuss today. Amen. Things of, uh, about chemical imbalances in your body and um, how testosterone and and estrogen, we, we discussed that, neoporephrine and different um, chemicals in your body, how they uh, interact and, and cause you to make different decisions and stuff. That's why you can't really trust yourself because your body may have a chemical imbalance. You might be on some type of uh, medication and it might cause you to make a, a bad decision. We need to trust God. Many times you can't trust yourself. You can't trust your decision, especially if you don't have a habit of crucifying your flesh. Amen. We need to learn how to trust, trust in him. Amen. Trust in him. So I just thank God for this lesson. I thank God for the people of God. I thank God for what he's doing and what he's done. Um, one moment. Sorry about that. I had to take a brief intermission. So I did want to discuss some of these things that I have prepared. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Thank God. Praise God. God is your source of your strength. Okay, we have uh, something called dopamine. 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 Is, um, is naturally produced by the brain. You know, in popular culture, media dopamine is portrayed as the main chemical of pleasure. And, um, you know, we desire things. Our, our, our body craves certain things. Amen. And this dopamine gives our, our uh, feelings of pre pleasure in our brain. Amen. So this is something that we can um, induce ourselves. Pleasure, amen. Through the taking of drugs, through uh, behaviors that cause pleasure in your brain that releases that chemical, dopamine, amen. And many times there's a reward system associated with dopamine. So even uh, the, the scripture says, "Train up a child in a way that he shall go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it." Amen. And sometimes when you're training up. A, a young person, I remember myself growing up, um, and there are certain rewards your parents give you for certain behaviors. Amen? And I know that even some people who raise their children, they, 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 a child doesn't have the discretion to, to say that they want to be a girl or they want to be a boy at the age of three, four, or five. A child does not have the mental capability to decide, to determine, even at six or seven. But if you attach a reward system to that child, it says, okay, you put a, you dress a boy up as a girl in a dress. And everybody laughs and smiles and, and, and parades and celebrates that child. That will want to make that boy want to be a girl. Not for any other reason but because of the reward system associated to that behavior. So that's why it's important for young people to be trained up properly. Scripture says train up a child in the way that he shall go or she shall go. Amen? So these, these, these um, rewards can uh, shape behaviors and create physical responses. Now, uh, nature, nature, nature. You have nurture, then you have nature. Amen. So 
in, in, in nature, you have um, your body um, has serotonin, oxy, oxy, oxytoxin, and all these neuroforeferin drugs that produces, that uh, uh, manifests alertness and arouse readiness in um, fight or flight responses in the body. Neoprenephrine, amen? And all, it's a lot, these different drugs are produced in the body. Amen? So, this is nature. This is something natural. Now, scripture says, it's not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is for her glory, for her hair is given for a covering. Amen? So certain, certain things are done by nature which distinguishes men from women. So we really need to let the Lord lead us. Lead us. And not our emotions which can be induced by chemicals or something like that. So don't rely on your feelings or the presence of external stimuli for critical making decisions. But we need to what? Trust. Trust in God. Now uh, I just wanted to bring that into the fray on today. And I just want to leave with you one thing. Trust God. Trust God and let him lead you. Let him guide you. Amen. And he will lead you and he, he will guide you. Um, you know, and we need to crucify our flesh also. Amen. We need to be pleasing to God. And he will have our back. Amen. So when God has your back, you're in the secret place of the Most High. That's the best place and the safest place you can be. Amen. So we just uh, going to move forward in the Lord. Um, we just thank God for you. Um, and we do accept offerings. Um, our offering is um, cash, uh, dollar sign, Berea Kojic 3. Dollar sign Berea Kojic 3, and we're located at um, 16067 Highway 72 in Rogersville, Alabama. Our order of services are 10 30 a.m. on Sunday, um, Tuesday at 12 noon, we have noon there prayer, and Wednesday we have uh, Bible study at 6 30 and um, p.m. in the evening, which is now what we're doing now. So we just thank God for you. We thank God for um, this first live stream, and hopefully we'll do some things that are um, that be improved. But the mo most thing is the Word of God. You can't improve on the Word of God, amen? You might improve on the things surrounding it, but you can't improve on the Word of God. But you can improve your relationship with God, amen? And that's what we want to do. We want to give you a means to improve your relationship with God. So we thank God for you today. Continue to bless, uh, continue to keep, ask God to continue to bless you, um, continue to um, keep you. And um, I see um, my cousin Shante is on now. Hey, Sean, love you, darling. I see my beautiful wife Carolyn is on now. God bless you, honey. Um, we thank God for you. And we thank God that um, all everything all is well. And um, God is good. God is still in the blessing business. Continue to keep us and keep us in your prayer. Amen. God bless you.